Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. In my old church, they would go, He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. I'm Bob Irving, and I welcome you to Sober United Methodist Church. Does anyone have any announcements this morning? We have a worship meeting on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Worship meeting Wednesday at 7. Okay, I might be five minutes late. Seriously. I have a, a customer appointment at 5.30, and it's about 45 minutes away. But I'll be there. Okay. And anyone else that would like to attend is welcome to come to the worship committee meeting. That's where we design all this wonderful worship. Any other announcements? Carol, you have any announcements from the kitchen? <laughs> well, I'm pleased to tell you that um, our meals went to uh, Caring for Friends last week and uh, we worked really hard. We have 55 meals in the freezer right now, and Peggy has 55 in her freezer at home to bring over. So we have April covered. So um, hopefully we'll get those down to caring for friends soon. Any others? Well, thank you. Let us now center ourselves for worship. Will you please rise if you are able and join me in the call to worship? God is good. All the time. God, God is good. good. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. Let all the people proclaim God's steadfast love and yours forever. The Lord is my strength, my song, and my salvation. The shouts of joy resounding in the tents of the righteous. God's steadfast love and yours forever. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. We, we, we will not die but live. We will proclaim that the Lord has done. We have the days of the Lord are given in thanks. For this day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in you. Amen. Will you please join Connie and Marge in our opening hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, found in your hymnal number 302.
God of power and mercy, with the rising of the sun you have raised Jesus Christ and delivered him and us from death's destruction. We praise you this bright day for all your gifts of new life. Especially we thank you for all victories over sin and evil in our lives, for the loyalty and love of friends and family, for the newborn, the newly baptized, and those now in your eternal home, for the renewal of nature that we experience each spring, for the continuing witness of the Church of Christ, more so for the sacrifice and resurrection of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 10, <clears throat> verses 34 through 43, and can be found in the insert in your bulletin. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of God. Jesus said to his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Now for those of you that are new to this church, we uh, try to, well, let me put it this way. We are a migratory congregation. We stand up, walk around, shake hands with people. But there are some people that do not wish to shake hands. So, sometimes it's okay just to say, peace be with you. Let us now offer one another a sign of peace. 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 Peace be with you. So nice to see you. Now is the time for our sharing of joys and concerns. Does anyone have any joys that they wish to share? Well, we do have a joy that um, Edna uh, was released from the hospital. She had a, 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 I don't want to call it a minor, because there's no, no such thing as a minor heart attack. But she had a, a heart attack last Sunday evening, actually. And so she was in the hospital for several days. Is home now, uh, but 
she, uh, they're trying to work out some medication issues for her, and uh, hopefully she'll be back with us soon. Other joys. Well, it's nice to see so many friendly faces. So many faces I haven't seen in quite a while. How about concerns? Yes, if uh, everyone could pray for my brother Dennis and my brother-in-law, Craig. Other concerns? Well, I have one. I found out yesterday there was a, a woman living in a rancher just below my house, down a hill. His name was John, her name is Peggy. And we were friendly and I take care of their dog every so often when they were under the weather. Well, he passed away in February, I did not know it. So I'd like to say prayers for Peggy and her family. I think she has six siblings. So. Oh, really? Talk into the microphone, Bob. <laughs> That's a concern. <laughs> Write that down, Bob. Other concerns? Uh, prayers for uh, John Little. They lost his wife back in December after 40-some years. He's struggling still. Other concerns? Then let us pray. Lord, we're so very grateful. For, so very grateful for friends returning to us, for new faces coming to the church, and we're grateful for this glorious day, this glorious Easter morning. And we're grateful for Edna, that she's recovering at home. And we pray for the doctors and nurses that take care of her, and we pray for Carl. And we hope that the doctors and nurses have the knowledge to restore her and bring her back to us. We pray especially today for Dennis and Craig, we pray that your comforting hand be upon them and their loved ones. We pray for Peggy. And we pray for John Little, who has gone through a horrible tragedy. And we pray for all those who have lost someone dear to them, that, that they feel your calming hand upon them. And now as the congregation names the names of the people that are on their heart, we will respond with, Lord, hear our prayer. Margaret. Lord, hear our prayer. The people in Ukraine. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear these prayers, O Lord, and the prayers for the people that are on our heart that we did not mention. And we praise you and worship you by reciting the words that your Son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will you please join Connie and Marge, and you may stay seated for this hymn. In our next hymn, In the Garden, found in your hymnal, number 314.
Our Gospel reading this morning is from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 12, and can be found in the insert in your bulletin. The Resurrection of Jesus. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again? <coughs> Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, good morning again. Good morning. And happy Easter. Happy Easter. Okay. My name is Bob Irving, in case you didn't catch it at the opening. And it is a privilege and an honor to serve as the pastor here at Solbury United Methodist Church. It is also that time of year where my allergies act up. Excuse me for a second. For those of you that have never heard me preach before, at the beginning of every sermon, I offer an explanation as to the sermon title or a Bob story. And today, I'm going to offer a Bob story. When I graduated from college with my bachelor's degree, I earned the job as assistant supervisor of recreation at Trenton Psychiatric Hospital. I say earned because in New Jersey, you had to take a civil service test to have the position. I received the top score on that test and was number 11 on the list of potential candidates. This was because that system automatically gave people that passed the test that had certain qualities a higher ranking. A veteran would automatically be number one. Unless another candidate was a veteran that was also a minority. And in looking at this whole setup, the one thing I determined was the best thing you could do, be is someone who passed the test and be a disabled Native American veteran. <laughs> and you were automatically number one. It didn't really matter if you could do the job or not, it just mattered what your status was. And I should have known this, but I was young, I was only 22, that the 10 candidates ahead of me declined taking the position. <laughs> that should tell you something about the position. But I accepted. And one of my roles was to hire all of our part-time recreation aides. Um, I would look for people that were in college. Mercer County was, was where it's located. So I'd look at Mercer Community College. I look at Trenton State College, which is now the College of New Jersey. I look at Ryder College so I could get some really good candidates, some people that were dedicated enough to actually spend money to get an education or have their parents spend money so they could get an education. And uh, we're looking for some extra income because it paid pretty well. It paid better than minimum wage. And I was their primary supervisor. Most of these people worked from 5.30 until 9.30. And one of the things that would happen is at 5.30, the, the residents, the patients, they were still finishing their dinners. So we would set up for our activities on the different units or in the gymnasium or wherever. And during this time, a lot of these people that I hired, they were very curious. They were curious about me. Why did I get into this? Blah, blah, blah. And one of the things that always happened, almost universally happened, is eventually they got to the point where they asked me some very personal questions. 
and I would tell them that I played college football. I weighed, I was five foot six and weighed 150 pounds. And I would also tell them that while I was playing college football, I contracted cancer. And they always had the same response to that story. They would look at me and they'd say, you? You play college football? I guess it was easier to believe that I had cancer than it was to believe that I played college football. And I know some of you are thinking, I wonder what the relevance is of that message to the gospel today. Well, I'll tell you eventually. Please pray with me. Lord, on this most glorious day, we celebrate our freedom. Your death and resurrection has freed us from slavery to sin and death. We cannot possibly comprehend the sacrifice that you made for us and are forever grateful. As we study your word, help us to become better disciples and better followers of your way. We pray in your name, Jesus Christ, and all the people said, Amen. Amen. Well, this was a busy week for Jesus. He rode into town. There was a big parade. People said, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He had the Last Supper. He prayed at the Garden of Gethsemane. There was a betrayal. He got kissed by Judas. He got interrogated by Caiaphas. He got interrogated by Pilate. He got interrogated by Herod. He got interrogated by Pilate again. He was subject to public scorn. People were given a choice. They chose a criminal over him. He was crucified. And he died. And Joseph of Arimathea, a Pharisee, had to petition Pilate to take, take the body and put it in the tomb. And he did. This is one of those interesting Easter's. You know, it doesn't always happen that Good Friday, the day of Jesus' death, and Passover start on the same day. Our calendars are a little mixed up. So we are actually living, basically, the same calendar type day, the same calendar type period. And I know that this scripture isn't familiar to anyone. I mean, I'm sure you haven't heard this like a hundred times. So it's the same story that you find in the other Gospels where the tomb is empty, the women find it first, they are confused, they meet angels or they meet Christ and they think he's a gardener or whatever. In this case, they meet the angels. You know, and they say something like, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Or, he is not here. And they run back and tell the disciples. And the disciples don't believe. And then Peter goes and checks for himself. And Peter is amazed. And since you've heard this so often, I'm going to get right down to, what does this mean for us? You know, preaching on Easter is kind of chaotic for a pastor. It's chaotic because there are people who have not been attending and who have not heard you preach that show up. And there are family members that come with people, and they're not used to your style of preaching. And a lot of preachers, myself included, when I first started, try to make something universally acceptable to all the ears in the crowd, which I don't do anymore. And some non-believers attend because they're goaded by family members. And they show up because it's easier than arguing. <laughs> it's hard to believe. How many people in here have had a loved one die? Think about this. Three days later, some woman walks up to you and says, Hey, he's not dead. I saw an angel. The angel told me he rose. How would you feel? Would you believe him? See, for us, for our mortals, death is death. I mean, that's it. It's gone. You're done. Right? You don't have any more bills to pay. 
That's all on your family. There's nothing left for you. You don't have to cut the grass. You don't have to fix the sink. You're done. Now you may have a remembrance service, a memorial, a celebration of life service. But you know, when you look at that casket and see the body in there, it's just a shell. That's all it is. The essence of the person is no longer there. But the message from the angels, he is risen. The women experience the resurrection of Christ through words. They don't see Jesus in this particular gospel. They just hear the words. And not actually seeing him makes it more unbelievable. The difference being, of course, if your loved one that had died showed up in front of you, you'd say, I, I guess they were right. And that is precisely what we have. We have a message. How many people in here have encountered the risen Christ face to face? Raise your hand. So all we have are words. Words that were written down. And incidentally, probably each and every one of you has faced the risen Christ you just didn't know. Because Christ shows up in people when you least expect it. But that's a different story, and that's a sermon for another time. Even Peter doesn't believe. That's why he rushes to the tomb. He wants to check for himself. He's probably thinking, oh, those women are crazy. I better go look for myself. And he runs off. And he walks away with amazed. And I know a lot of people think that, well, maybe somebody came and stole the body. I mean, that was the story that the, uh, the Pharisees told, told the Romans. Have you been to Israel? Have you seen the tombs? This particular tomb, the rock is huge. The rock that seals the tomb is huge. It's probably round, and it's about probably a little bit taller than this podium. And it's pretty thick. And it sits in a channel so that you can roll it. And the tomb was sealed with a Roman seal, which is something like cement. Yet the tomb, was, those rock was rolled away. I wouldn't be able to roll that rock. It took several people to roll that rock. You see, unbelief, unbelief on the part of people is not the lack of belief. It's belief in something else. Even an atheist believes in something else, believes that there is no God. That's their belief. But Easter challenges us. It challenges our certainties because, like I said earlier, experience that we have on this earth is that death is final. Experience tells you that you've got to get what you can while you can because you're not here forever. Or as some kids would say, and I think it's going out of fashion, YOLO. Easter tells us, really, can you be sure? Can you be certain? Easter calls you from your old belief in death to a new belief in life. When we worship at Easter, we actually are Peter. 
we hear the message. And we believe. Maybe. Because I'm sure there are people that don't believe. That are probably attending an Easter service. But hopefully, we can see ourselves in Peter, and we can walk away from a service amazed. You know, it's interesting. The Romans had this thing. It was, I forget the Latin term, but what it meant was an evangelizer. Whenever something happened in the Roman Empire, they would call this person out, he would stand in the square, and he would give the news. Caesar just defeated, you know, the, the Gauls, or whatever. They would give the news that way. They would only give good news. They did not give bad news like we see on our TV every day. So, if you look at the Russia-Ukraine war, the Russian one would speak about their victories. And the Ukrainian one would speak about their victories, but they wouldn't talk about their defeats. And I want you to think on this for a minute. If, if you lived in that time, and you knew the horrors of crucifixion, which was the most painful way to die, which is why the Romans invented it, because it was shameful and painful, and you were a follower of Christ. And you saw him die. Would you then go forth after seeing him risen? Or well, let's say you didn't see him rise. Would you go forth and spread the good news about Jesus Christ? Knowing that the Pharisees hated you, that the Sadducees hated you, that the chief priests, the scribes hated you, that the Romans hated you, and that you were due for crucifixion. Would you do it? Imagine, every government agency in the United States wants to kill you just because you say Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is God and part of the Holy Trinity. Every single one, from the municipalities to the federal government, want to kill you if you say that. Are you going to go out and say, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He's the living God. He is part of God. He is the Word. All things were made through Him. Are you going to do it? Do you have that kind of courage? You would only have that kind of courage if you knew. If you knew that He had risen. The Easter message is God telling us I've heard all you people have to say about death. Through the living Jesus, I give you life. Why would I offer anything less? And all the people said, Amen. You know, that's the first Easter sermon I ever got through without crying. Maybe I'll cry now. Uh, now is the time for our offering. We offer a non-contact method of offering. There is a plate on the table in the back. If you have an offering, now is the time for you to get up, put it in the plate, and when everyone is done, Wayne will bring it forward, and we will sing the doxology found in your hymnal, number 95. It's okay, we'll get it later. Don't worry about it. It wasn't that much.
Holy Christ.
benediction this morning is a public benediction and is printed on the back of your bulletin. Please join me. God, we are grateful for the blessings in our lives. We are grateful for the problems in our lives. We are thankful that we are members of your family. Most of all, we are thankful for the gift of the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. It is in his name we pray. Amen.